Good evening and uh, welcome to another one of my watch reviews. Those of you that have been watching you know, all of them, you know that I have a, a huge passion for wrist watches. And in fact, I've already done a review on uh, my Rolex uh, 16610 Submariner stainless steel. I think I'm going to have one of these coming up later on on my uh, Tudor Submariner. And I have several other watches I want to get out to as well. But one of the things that I haven't brought up yet, and most people don't even really think about anymore, is the other kind of watch, the watch that was around before the wrist watch, the pocket watch. And um, pocket watch is actually what got me into watching or watch collecting in the first place. I, um, I always thought they were very unique and interesting, and uh, I wish fashions weren't the way they were sometimes because I'd like to wear mine out, but it's kind of odd to have a pocket watch anymore. So today, we're actually going to be talking about a pocket watch. And then to be more specific, this is an 1899 Elgin Railroader style because the, uh, the pin and the chain loop over here are actually to the side instead of mounted at the top. That designates it as a Railroader's watch. And this particular model is actually from 1899. So it's 111 years old. And actually this particular watch too has been in my family that entire time. It belonged to my great 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 Uncle Will who died in the, or the 1930s. So. It's always been in my family, and actually for those of you into watch collecting but you're not, should we say, wealthy, or uh, have extra money to be throwing around, pocket watches are actually a um, pretty affordable way to get into watch collecting. A watch like this, this is, like I said, it's an 1899 Elgin pocket watch, they typically retail for a few hundred dollars. In fact, I've actually spent more money restoring this one than it's actually worth. but. Just because they're cheaper doesn't mean you're getting a great watch. They're actually, I think, by my personal opinion, having owns and owning currently several multi-thousand to ten thousand dollar plus Swiss watches, I think they're at least as nice in quality, if not better quality, than some of the stuff they're making now. So, I think they're wonderful. As you can see, they're pretty simple. I mean, mine particularly has Arabic numerals, and then it's got a um, at the six o'clock position. There's a second hand ticking so the, the hands are split you know more more swatches now the second hand and the uh, hour and minute hands are all on the same axis so this one's split having a little bit of issue getting lighting here but um like I said it's got Arabic numerals it's small dashes it's got intricate hands they're um they're very thin and um, nicely shaped and the hands actually aren't original to this watch um my parents, actually excuse me, my grandparents made the mistake of giving this watch to me when I was a young kid. I saw it in a drawer and wanted it, and I think I was like six years old. I proceeded to break the crystal out of it and break the hands off the watch, and actually destroyed it. <laughs> so, the watch has been restored by me, actually, a couple of years ago. For about $200, somebody cleaned the movement out and put new hands and glass on it. And like I said, the watch is only worth a few hundred dollars, so... I ended up paying a, a decent amount of money to get it fixed for what it is, but it's considered to Swiss watches, it's very cheap. I mean, like a Rolex, for example, every couple of years is $500 plus just to get serviced. So as I said, you know, it's a um, very simple face. You have the crown here. It's um, manual wind, so you turn, I already wound it, but you turn it like this to wind the movement. Obviously, you pull it out to set the date, or not to set the date, excuse me, to set the time. There is no date function on this watch of course. Um, the date function I believe was an invention of Rolex. Don't quote me, but I'm pretty sure. And I think it came out the same time as their Cyclops feature. So this is 1899. This is before watches had dates to my knowledge. I could be wrong. Correct me if I am. Um, you can see here where my thumb is. It says Elgin. For those of you who are familiar with um, American pocket watches, Elgin and Waltham were the two like powerhouses of you know um, pocket watches and watches of this time period. And in fact IWC International Watch Company was also one of them, but now they're on Swiss owned and they make things that are totally not like this at all anymore. Elgin got bought out by a Chinese company, as did Waltham, I'm pretty sure, and they still make stuff theoretically, but it's not the same. I think it's junk. So, but this older stuff, like I said, is phenomenal. And um, a lot of people, when they get these things, especially, they're kind of confused. If they have a case like this, they're confused as to how do you open it to see the movement. And what a lot of people don't realize is the companies like Elgin made the movement itself so they made like the face and the movement but the case was made by another company so to get to this particular one you can see there's a little bit of a seam here to get the case open you actually have to apply pressure on the top part of the case and it unscrews like this 
and see that comes off see it's got a thread here through um, the screw it and that comes off and then you can see the face better actually the face is actually made out of porcelain it's a porcelain dial and then it's you know it's got the numbers printed onto it the um, the second hand here is actually in a well it's actually sunken it's a lower level than the dial and then to open it up and see the movement first you pull the stem out and then there's a little thumb hole right here kind of a finger hole it's a little edge you apply pressure to it and you pop it open like this and there you have the movement which as you can see I believe this called this engine turning it's very detailed and uh, if you look here in the case I won't be able to pick it up on camera that is the name of the company that made the case that's actually their stamp I don't think I can get it to focus but um, it basically says that it's you know it's 100% silver case it says silver road actually and there's actually a serial number printed here for the case itself and this also has like an engine turning feature to it and then the wash itself on the movement up here it says Elgin National Watch Company there is a um, in blue printing I don't think you can pick up these details on camera there is a um, it says USA over here and there's an actual um, you know serial number and then here there's this little lever and there's a plus and a negative side either way and that's to set the speed of the movement so you can adjust it for accuracy so that the watch doesn't run too fast or too slow and um, this this is the movement itself is actually all original I just had it polished so this is actually the way it was and it left the factory in 1899 so you're actually seeing 1899 engineering here and if I pull up the camera maybe you can hear a tick I don't know if you can or not it is a, a really cool sound and I tell people sometimes it's almost like I can hear like my uncle's heartbeat or something because I know he carried this it's just a really interesting noise I personally am not very well versed in Elgin history I do know that these pocket watches were made in very high number I mean this particular being that it's a railroader's watch that it's you know that the stem is off to the side I don't know makes it a rarer watch than the more conventional way the watches were mounted where the stem was at the top at the 12 o'clock position versus the three but in terms of actual numbers produced or what's around anymore I mean pocket watches aren't exactly rare you can find them at a lot of antique dealers and when it comes down to like what the individual bottles are worth it varies very highly based on like case material and also I mean if it's IWC or some of the other ones that are still current and still famous now they're worth more Elgin in particular isn't very isn't I mean it's collectible but it's not expensive collectible it's easy to get into so as you're seeing I'm trying to get the thing to close and um, you gotta be they're kinda tricky you gotta get the stem in the right position to to fit the case back down it's a, it's a little game that's not particularly easy there it goes I got it pop the stem back in so uh, they're not easy to get the <laughs> the movement to pop back into the case you gotta get it right at the right position so uh, yeah it turns pretty easily it's um, in terms of accuracy you know we're talking about 1899 here so uh, I've actually never worn the thing for a full day but I have kept track of it over like an hour period and I've seen it lose time so I mean I think they could be I think they're within like 30 seconds a day but don't quote me they um you know there's an older watch of that time period they're not the most reliable right here any of you guys there's a little side tip here when you're looking at pictures on eBay and sales websites and if you see the time set like this or the hour the minute hand is on 10 and the hour hand is on 2 this is the conventional time that Rolex and a lot of big watch producers set the time to when they take pictures of their watches and that's pretty it's one of those easy ways to tell if a photo is a professional photograph from like an actual manufacturer if it was taken by somebody else I mean I set it to this time and if I was making an ad for a watch that I was going to sell I'd set it to this time as well but if you see you know somebody selling watches on eBay or something or another site and they're showing you their watch they're all set to this time and there's a high chance that it was actually a professional photograph taken by the actual watch maker and not what they're probably selling you so just a little side tip there so uh, like I said it's a very cool watch and I hope you enjoyed the review bye